Welcome to part two of playing Pong with deep reinforcement learning. In the last video, we walked through our library imports, we created an OpenAI gym environment, and we created a couple of classes to handle our image processing and build out the, and then a method here to build the model um, that we're going to be using in training to play our Pong game. The next section here, we are going to be moving on to actually declaring a policy um, using our function here to actually build the model and uh, then declaring our agent. So the policy um, is going to be an epsilon greedy policy. Um, I'm not going to get too much in depth here, but it is a necessary piece that we need to pass in um, to the DQN agent when we're training the model. So what we're going to do, we're going to say policy equals linear annealed policy. We're going to say that it's an epsilon greedy Q policy. And this is going to take a few um, different parameters, so I'm just going to put each on a line. Make sure to put a comma at the end of each line. This is an easy place to make mistakes. So attribute EPS, value max. So you can think of value max and value min as how many of the actions the agent's going to take are going to be random and how many of them are going to be um, taken by the agent. So when we first start training, the agent doesn't know anything. So in order for it to learn, it has to take random actions. So value max implies 1.0 that all actions are random. And that's how it's going to start out. It's going to take every random action. Value min, we're going to put it at 0 0.1. And that's basically going to say that as the, as the agent learns, it'll go from taking every action is random to taking only 10% or 0 0.1 um, you know as a, as a ratio of the uh, actions as random so we'll slowly go from exploratory to the model exploiting um, what it knows that's usually called the exploration versus exploitation trade-off we're either exploring the environment with with a max value or we're exploiting what the agent knows in order to um, play the game. We're also going to pass in a value test, which is going to be very low, and that is used um, when we call the test function. And then we're going to call a number of steps here, which I'm just going to set at 500,000. That ended up being a good number for me. All right. Now we created a method up here to build the model. We're going to call it down here. So model equals build the model. Input shape. And what I've found over time is that once you start defining these, you'll be able to split this out into its own class. And uh, this becomes a much more usable piece of code. Now you may have to play with you know number of neurons, number of layers, um, but big chunks of this will be the same across multiple similar problems. So I'm going to set nb actions equal nb actions. All right, and then we're actually going to declare our agent. So the agent is the thing actually playing the game. Um, we're going to use something called DQN agent, which we are importing um, up here. So uh, there we go, from RL agents DQN import DQN agent. And DQN agent is smart enough to plug into the Python gym environment. It understands that environment, so we can play it, we can use it for anything that is um, in the Python gym pretty easily. Um, you could also, if you wanted to apply this to a problem that's not in Jim, you can create a custom Jim environment, which then goes into DQN agent again, very simply. 
Um, I'm going to say DQN equals DQN agent. We're going to say model equals model because we already defined our model. I'm going to say NBN actions equals NB actions. And again, this is was defined up here. We had a we pulled that from our action space, and that defines the number of things it can try. We're going to say policy equals policy. Memory. All right, and we don't have a memory. So let's go ahead and define one and then talk about what memory is. So memory equals sequential memory. Limit equals, I'm going to say 500,000. Window length equals window length. So it may sound obvious, but you can think of the, the sequential memory object as a buffer that's going to store the last 500,000 states that the agent's seen. Reinforcement learning is relatively complex um, and having a, a memory here allows the agent to actually train on you know our last 500,000 states and moves as if that was a standard deep learning problem. Um, this is a way to have it you know, train on, on batches of previous data, even though in this scenario, you know, we're creating the data through interactive um, gameplay. So that's really what we're trying to do here. That's what this policy is for. So as we roll down here, we've created our, or sorry, I said policy, I meant memory. That's what the sequential memory is for. So as we roll down through here, we have our memory equals sequential memory. We've given it our limit and our window length, the number of blocks it's going to, so it's going to store blocks of size window length up to this limit. And now we can continue defining our DQN agent. So memory equals memory, processor equals, so we don't yet have a processor. We're going to need to generate one, so that's gonna be this class up here. So we can say processor equals image processor. And then MB steps warm up. We're going to set this to 50,000. So remember when we talked up here about that um, exploration versus exploitation uh, trade off. So number of steps warm up is basically going to let the agent take 50,000 random steps before it tries to learn anything. Um, that lets it get some data on the environment without getting painted into a corner. So gamma is going to be dot nine nine in our scenario. Target model update equals 1,000. So it's going to go back and update itself every thousand steps. Um, that way it's not trying to train every single time. It can you know go for a little while train on that data, go for a little while more. Train interval equals 12, and delta clip equals one. All right, so now we have our agent. So in some cases, you'll see someone compiling a model. Um, in this scenario, we're actually going to compile the agent. So that's gonna be dqn.compile. And we're going to feed it our optimizer. So earlier we imported Atom. So, and I'm going to give Adam a learning rate of 0 0.00025 steps. The learning rate you can think of as how big the hops are that the network's going to take as it tries to converge on the best possible um, policy. So this is a, a great place um, to go look up how gradient descent works. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't seen that before, but a, a good way to think of this is if I set this too high, like maybe to zero dot one, it will attempt to learn very quickly, but it might jump over the best solution. Um, setting this to zero 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 two five is still a relatively fast learning rate for what we're doing, um, or at least fast enough for my purposes. Um, but it, it's still small enough that it's taking incremental steps 
and converges on a functional policy. So if you've got your model, that, if your model is training too slowly, you can make this value bigger. Um, if your model is never hitting a point of accuracy, you could maybe look at making this model smaller. Or value, not model. Equals. So we're going to say metrics equals MAE, which stands for mean absolute error. Um, now we're going to do a little bit that has to do with saving the model. So something that I ran into, unless you have a dedicated, um, you know, powerful GPU system, or you're training in the cloud, these things can take a while to train. Um, if you've done other part, other types of deep learning, they may have trained relatively quickly. Um, you know, these types of sort of game-based uh, reinforcement learning, you know, things are, they tend to be single, uh, single file. You can only play the game so fast and in a straight line. Um, and they take a long time to learn. This took about a million and a half steps to figure out the game once I got the code working. Um, and that, for me, took several days. So something that I put together was a, um, just a way to save, or, you know, some code to save the model so that I could kick this off, you know, come back eight hours later, and then, uh, you know, basically start it over and not lose my place. So I'm going to set a um, checkpoint file name. And we're going to set that to DQN checkpoint dot uh, HF5. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to set a checkpoint callback. And that's what actually lets it. Um, that's what's actually going to give it the information to use that file name. So I'm going to say model interval checkpoint equals checkpoint file name interval equals 1000. So it's going to update that file every thousand steps. And you'll notice that our IDE here is warning us that we have an imported model inter uh, interval checkpoint. So let's go up to the top and go ahead and pull that in. So that's going to be from rl.callbacks. Import, I'm actually going to do, there we go, model interval checkpoint. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this code. Again, run your code early and often, just to make sure nothing breaks syntax-wise. All right, and something did break here. So let's see what our model didn't like. All right, so I paused the video for a few minutes and uh, dug around in my code until I saw the problem. This is one of the easiest and most common errors to make, and that is in um, your parentheses. So you'll notice I have a permute here. The permute should have taken both of these variables with the first one being a tuple and the second being our input shape. So I just need to add an extra set of parens there and then I'll make sure, yep, that lines up, that lines up and those line up. And then let's try this again. All right, so despite the fact that this all printed out in red, uh, that was in fact a success up to that point. So we're going to continue on with our saving of the model. So we've defined our model interval checkpoint. That's our checkpoint file name. Our interval is a thousand. We're gonna save every thousand tries. Now, I'm sure that there is a cleaner way to do this. Maybe a check if file exists would be better. Um, but in, uh, in programming, we are often lazy and I'm going to be in this scenario. I'm going to have a try block. So model.load Waits, checkpoint file name, not, not, not callback, checkpoint file name, print, we'll do an F string, loaded checkpoint file name, except 
print, and we're going to say, oh, oh. no checkpoint file to load under checkpoint file name. All right. And then if we want to do this correctly, we actually need to bring all of these. I'm going to control X this and bring it up over where we're doing the model compilation. Load checkpoint file if available. Always good to comment your code. All right. So at this point, we have checked to see if there is a file. Um, we have accepted and moved on if there is no file, which there won't be for this first run. And then we are going to actually build out the training code. Now, a couple things we can do here. Um, I, again, programmed this thing initially over and had it train over several days um, just because I couldn't you know, leave the machine running all the time. Um, so what I tried to do here is set some variables up so I could do um, training or testing and you know train for X number of intervals, do some validation, and then you know toggle back and forth. So what we're going to do, I'm going to set a variable called train equals, and actually let's let's set it way up at the top. That'll be easier to flip back and forth. So just up here under input shape, I'm gonna say train equals true. Again, other cleaner ways you could do this. But then down here, I'm going to say if train equals true metrics, which we could use later, but we're probably not going to, equals dqn.fit. So fit is the actual training function. This is where it's going to um, run the model and actually try to train it and, and teach it to do something. So we're going to say env because we're passing in our environment from earlier. This is our actual um, training environment. We're going to say nb steps equals, I'm going to say a million. Uh, in practice, I had to run this closer to 1.5 million to get it working. Your mileage may vary. Callbacks equals checkpoint callback. Log interval equals 10,000. That's how often it's going to log. Visualize equals false um, because we don't want it to just throw up a, we don't want to watch it train a game a million times. That would, um, you get to a point where the, the actual graphics and visualization would take way longer than the training. Uh, then we're going to call dqn.test just to do a validation after it finishes training. env nb episodes equals one. Visualize equals true. And then we're just going to close out the environment because we don't need it anymore. And we'll call model.summary. Okay. So at this point, this thing should be ready to go out. It should be able to start training. Um, we're going to go ahead and run this and see it take off. All right. So you can see down here that we are now slowly working through our um, first training epoch. Um, in the next video, I'm going to come back with a train network and we're actually going to talk about how to test it and how to use it in a quote-unquote real-world scenario. So with that, I will see you next time.